Hello, ha, top of the morning, friends and family. How are you wonderful, beautiful people doing today? Once a week, we upload a beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece to this channel. This video is uncut. And in today's uncut video, I want to talk with you guys, specifically those of you who are being condemned for speaking the truth. That's something I'd like to really talk to you about. Even if just one person benefits from hearing what I have to say today in this video, then it's good enough for me uh, on my heart to talk about this. So I'm going to, but first things first, it is hatching season around here. So we're going to show some of the snakes that are hatching. I've got this clutch right here with Mama Maya, the coral glow ball python. And little mama here has just shed out and all of her babies are sitting underneath her and they've all shed out too. So I wanted to share that with you guys as it is, as I mentioned, hatching season here and we're gonna have lots of cool clutches. Actually, I've got another cool clutch right up there that's hatching right now that I think I'll pull down and we can take a look at as well. But Maya here is giving birth to some beautiful coral glow babies and even some super coral glow because dad was a coral glow pied. So we're just gonna move mama aside for a moment just so we can check out these beautiful babies. And as some of you may know, when you introduce the uh, heterozygous form of piebaldism, which is not visual in these animals because it is a simple recessive trait. So since these animals are only heterozygous for it, they're not gonna be showing any visual signs of piebaldism. And I say that, but one of the really cool things that uh, an animal carrying the piebald gene on one side of its chromosomes has show up in their phenotype is extra contrast. So you look at these coral glows here, they have a lot more contrast. Sorry, baby, I'm gonna borrow you from the pile over here. They just have a lot more contrast. You guys can probably see that on the camera showing up, just the contrast between the, you know, the grayish, the lavender colors and the yellow and orange that's popping in there just a lot more contrast than your standard coral glow animal would have. Just way more contrast, and that carries through it as an adult as well, which is pretty awesome. And then, of course, we've got the, the normals here, the wild type, which are also beautiful in their own right, carrying the het piebald, carrying that piebald trait. So heterozygous for piebald, you can, if, the, if that tail stayed flipped a little longer, you'd be able to see some some tracking happening, trying to hold the camera with one hand and move the snakes around with the other is, is not uh, always the road to success there, but can't quite make it out on, on that one. Let's take a look at this one. And since the male was a male maker, then all of these normals should be female. And we may even get some female, um, whoa, mama's kind of taking an interest in my hand over here. Yep, you just stay over there. And then we've got some super core glows too, and you can tell the difference between the super core glows and the regular core glows because the supers are a bit more uh, light, kind of pastel in color. And the supers in this clutch have a lot of white showing up in the alien heads, which is pretty awesome. But also that extra contrast then you would see in a typical super core glow ball python, as you can see here with this example, this particular animal right here. There's a lot more contrast than your average non-het piebald super coral glow would have. Just uh, just beautiful snakes, man. It's so fun to hatch out these snakes. And this added benefit of getting to watch all the snakes this season hatch out with their moms is just has just been a real cool blessing. Um, I would highly recommend this to anyone who's who's ready with their temperatures and, and enclosures and setups to to do something like this successfully. It's quite rewarding, quite rewarding indeed. So I'm gonna put her away before they crawl off while I'm in the middle of the talking. And we're gonna take a look at that other clutch, even though it hasn't shed out yet. We'll have a quick pop in at that. And then I'll talk to you about the meat of our video as you guys stare off into nothingness while I walk around the room and look for this other clutch. The cool thing about this clutch that's hatching out is this is the third generation snake. So this is actually the granddaughter of the first fire clown that we ever bred here at Triple B. And so, yes, beautiful, beautiful fire clown right there. And her baby's underneath. She was paired with an orange dream spot nose clown 
male. So we'll go into more detail on this clutch. As you can see, they, the shininess there, they still have their egg skin on and have not had their first shed yet. So, but it's <laughs> such a cool thing to hatch out a clutch of just clowns. And it looks like we could have got a good variety between uh, fire clowns, maybe some fire spot nose, um, just regular clown, uh, maybe just some, some orange dream clown, and maybe even some orange dream spot nose fire clowns. So beautiful clutch. I'm excited to share this one with you guys once they shed out, but I'm going to get this one put away too, not with one hand because that would be a disaster. <clears throat> So, as the title suggested, those of you that are dealing with uh, being condemned or, or, or being, uh, you know, just being put in a bad spot, for lack of better words, for speaking truth to anybody, whether, whether it's a, a loved one. And I'm talking about real truth here. I'm talking about truth, truth. I'm not talking about uh, all this subjective truth you hear about today. I'm not talking about your own personal truths. I'm talking about just speaking the real truth to anybody about anything, but more, more particularly, especially to people you care about. Um, I would, I would hope that if you're ever speaking truth to someone, it's because you care about them, not because you want to win some kind of intellectual battle that, that to me isn't, uh, isn't the way to go about it ever. But even, even when you're coming at somebody and, and trying to go over the truth with them, um, it can be hard. It can be very difficult for, for both parties. It can be really hard for some people who, who really need to hear the truth to hear it. That can be, that can be tough. I know for me included, you know, I'm not, I'm not coming with at you guys here as some guy who, who's got it all figured out or who, who, uh, I'm, I'm not here to preach to you about, you know, that I know it all and you, you need to listen to me about this. It's, that's not it at all. I am also a person who, uh, needs to hear the truth at times. And, and when that truth is spoken to me, a lot of times, if I really need to hear it and it's coming from somebody I care about, it, it really affects me often negatively, especially if it's something that I really need to hear that I don't want to hear. Um, so um, my point of bringing this up is to encourage those of you who might be going through something like that yourselves, who have somebody in, their, in your life that you really feel would benefit that their lives would be turned around or that, that, that there would be a, a transformation in their lives for the better if they were to accept whatever truth it is that you're, you're speaking to them, whatever, whatever true, true, objective truth, not subjective truth, but objective truth, um, whether that's that they, they need to, you know, get off drugs or they need to stop um, treating their significant other a certain way uh, poorly uh, or abusively and, or... Uh, or any, any, any situation like that that you can imagine where the, the truth of the matter is that, that somebody needs to turn their life into, in a different direction. Um, I just want to encourage you to, to stay that course, stay that course, even if it seems like it's fruitless. Um, you know, sometimes people who really need to hear the truth, when they do hear it, their immediate reaction is not one of, Oh, the success. Oh, oh, of course, that's exactly what I needed to do. Thanks for telling me. No, more often it's met with hostility, hatred, um, maybe even violence. So one other thing in that same thread I'd like to encourage you is to have the wisdom to not cast your pearls of knowledge before swine and, and know when your words are falling on deaf ears. Um, that's a little more tricky. It takes a little extra discernment. So, uh, if you can't tell the difference sometimes, but at least say what you need to say, see what needs to be said and, and hope that that seed of that little nugget you drop there, uh, grows and sprouts because I've been seeing it happen around me recently, which is why I'm encouraged to tell you guys, you know, there, there's been situations, I'm not going to go into details here for the sake of folks that are not on this video and um, I'm respecting their privacy. Things that I've said to folks that I thought, you know, I, I said what I needed to say and maybe something will come of it, maybe something won't. And even here a year later, stuff's starting to change and, and that stuff's starting to, starting to um, take hold. And, and those little seeds that I planted that time ago 
starting to sprout. And it's a beautiful thing when that starts to happen. So just again, a word of encouragement. Don't be discouraged from telling the truth in the places where it really needs to be told. And tell it because you care for those that you're telling it to. And that's it. Hopefully not too heavy for you. you guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll see you on the next video. Aloha.